The Detroit Lions have to get help on the defensive line, and with free agency less than seven days away was when the official tampering period begins. Who is on the Detroit Lions radar, whether it's defensive tackle, defensive end, or someone in the secondary, we will know in about seven days. But coming from Ian Rappaport earlier this afternoon, shout out to my guy Rocked On Podcast Network. He's been high on this dude and just made a video about him. Says, the Dolphins will not franchise tag standout defensive tackle Christian Wilkins, sources say, meeting meaning the longtime pillar of Miami's defense will be a free agent. Wilkins will be one of the top free agent rushers, uh, I'm sorry, regardless of position. And then we go here, Cameron Wolf added to that, says, Christian Wilkins not tagged and set to sign a massive free agent deal next week. Two execs and in Indy predicted, to me, he could match or top Quinnen Williams, Jeffrey Simmons, Dexter Lawrence, in the 22 to $25 million range, long uh, one of NFL's best run stuffers, Wilkins had a career high of nine sacks. Now, that's ironic because last year, all of the major defensive tackles seemed like they were either up for a contract or they was holding out from Chris Jones to Ed Oliver to Quentin Williams to... Deron Payne to Jeffrey Simmons last year was the year of the defensive tackle and we were unable to get none of those I don't think any of them really hit free agency if I'm not mistaken they were either tagged and then came to a deal I think Quentin Williams was tagged not not Quentin Williams Deron Payne was tagged and then came to a deal which is what they're trying to do with Legereus Need if they can't come to a deal or trade him then they'll that's what they'll do so but this year the defensive tackle market, while now not as stout, it is not too bad. And the Detroit Lions have an opportunity to snatch somebody of, of, of game-changing proportions. Now, here's my thing. I'm going to try to keep, keep calm, all right? Especially after the Broderick Martin video the other day. My philosophy was why get a DT when you drafted a DT and you traded up to get one. All I saw in the comment section was how Broderick Martin is going to have a, he's going to make a jump in year two. So with that being said, you have a lean McNeil, you have Broderick Martin, you have Benito Jones, you have like, is, are you going to go with Broderick and Benito or are you going to try to bring someone in, whether it's through free agency or the draft? Now, Wilkins is that dude. Saw him on hard knocks. Very, bubbly personality he seems like just from what i saw that he would be kind of fit right in here in detroit uh, along with the rest of the players which is very crucial when it comes to the detroit lions and and what dan campbell and brad holmes are looking for so here's what they had to say this is coming from fan sided from Alan Popart says Wilkins is a foundational piece of the Dolphins, a tone setter on defense and a leader, and also was the team's first draft pick when they started their massive rebuilding project in 2019. That came from all Dolphins. He has emerged over the years as a top end defensive tackle, adding a pass rushing element to his game last season when he produced a career high of nine sacks. Now, just to give you an idea of what it takes for a defensive tackle to get five, six sacks. It takes a lot. Aleem McNeil missed four games. He had five. I'm going to say Aleem could have had seven, six, something like that. All of the stud, Chris Jones, I want to say last year, or 2022, had 15, 15 from the interior. That is a massive feat. It, it's crazy because... As the pocket begins to collapse, this person has to corral the quarterback, usually in the inside. And if you watch Hutch, when Hutch comes from the outside, the quarterback will step up and start to scramble. And in this case, a lot of times these guys are corralled by that defensive tackle. So if you can get nine and a half sacks, seven, eight from the defensive tackle position, that is a big deal. So Christian it, it has done that last year. Now let's look at his stats again. A 2020, let me see. He was drafted in 2019, a first round pick, pick number 13. He had a forced fumble, I want to say, in that last game against the Buffalo Bills when they were playing for the division at that point, but had nine sacks from the defensive tackle position, spent his entire career in Miami, played the last three seasons 
at 17 games. And if I'm not mistaken, this 21, 22, and 23 have all been 17-game seasons. This was the last 16-game season, but we had a seventh playoff team. So in his career, this guy has only missed two games in five years. Out of a possible 83, he's played 81. In that 81, he's amassed 20 and a half sacks coming off a career year. See, this is more like it. Four and a half, three and a half. Aleem had five, right? This is more like it for like an average defensive tackle to get four and a half, you know, in in the middle of the tens, like five or six. That would be big. But nine coming from the interior is a big deal. Now, let's look at his projected value from Track. Four years, $80 million, all right? $20 $20 million a year. That is what the projected value for Christian Wilkins would be. So here's the thing. I'm to the point that, of course, you guys know, I'm a huge pass rusher edge guy. That's just who I want. However, however, a interior lineman who can get to the quarterback, to me, would be great as well. Because if we had Hutch on one side, let's be real. Charles Harris is not coming back. Romeo is not coming back. It's only a matter of time. In two weeks, we won't even be talking about these guys because they'll be free agents or on another team, but they won't be part of our team. So if we have, if you guys believe that much in James Houston, then maybe we could have James Houston on one side and we can have Hutch on another side. But even if we sign Christian, that doesn't mean we have to stop there because we have the draft as well. And even though we're picking later, we can pick some guys back there, whether it's a Darius Robinson, a Chop Robinson, whatever it is, we can pick one of those guys. You never know. Brad might have something up his sleeve where he comes up and tries to get Dallas Turner or one of those other guys, right? So it's definitely not the end all be all. But if we if we don't get the edge, I am not going to be mad at a defensive tackle. Now, the reason I'm not going to be mad is because, like, last year I would have been mad. And I, I could be mad because you guys know I, I don't have to keep speaking on Broderick. You, you, you just can't. Why would we? My philosophy is you trade it up to get a DT. So that means you have to focus on, on DE, right? But depth is scarce at either position. It, it really is. When you start to gut the – we got rid of Isaiah Bugs, We have Benito Jones. We have some no-name people as well. John Kaminsky, who can play inside and outside. We don't have a bunch of interior. We don't have a bunch of linemen anyway, like period. If you go look, I didn't have the the Lions roster pulled up. I should have thought of that. But if you look at it, we don't have a lot. So this will be stockpiled during the draft and free agency. So Christian Wilkins, I would prefer an edge. My number one guy is an edge. Josh Allen is rumored to be tagged tomorrow by 4 o'clock. He, they already decided if they can't get a deal, they will tag him. So I'm expecting that to come out at about 4, 4.15, if not before. So he seems to be off the table. You guys know how I feel about Brian Burns. I'm not going to complain if we get him. I would prefer Daniil over Brian. But at this point, it. I mean, it, when I say whoever, I don't literally mean that. I want multiple people like we need we have to go deep between the draft and free agency we're going to have to go deep we are very scarce at these two positions if you go and look at the people that we have available on our roster roster and the people that we're going to be losing as well so let me know in the comments below christian wilkins like i said if you go watch hard knocks or something like that he really seems like he would fit right in real uh happy-go-lucky guy uh bubbly personality puts in work right so This guy, career year, career year, and is probably going to get paid as well. So we missed out on a defensive tackle last year, one of the game-changing ones. We have an opportunity to get one this year. Let's see if that, how much of of a priority is this? Now, let me ask you this in the comments below. Do you think if you guys, for those of you who said that Broderick Martin was going to take a, a massive leap in year two, do you think the leap will be big enough that we don't need to take a Christian Wilkins? That's a question for you to answer in the comments below. We are 125 subscribers away from 20,000 when I finally get to give the lion away. I really thought we would be there by now, but I guess with nothing really happening, it's it's a really slow month. This is when you start to detox from kind of everything football, and then it ramps back up. So February was like the detox month. 
It's already been almost a month since the Super Bowl, and it's been over a month since the Detroit Lions took the field. So what a month it was. We're already into the 4th of March. So how crazy is that? So consider subscribing. Help me get to 20K. I would appreciate it. This channel is sponsored and brought to you by members and viewers and subscribers just like you. So consider subscribing. I want to say thank you to everyone who watches, especially my members as well. You guys are awesome. Take care of yourself and each other. And as always, go Lions.